Hey, as an insurance agent, you understand how difficult it is to position life insurance. It's not always easy finding a person who's like, okay, I wanna buy right now. I'm looking to buy life insurance immediately. Oftentimes, they wanna put it off. They wanna think about it. They're not ready. They're not 100% confident in their decision, all right? A lot of agents can become discouraged with someone not wanting to pull the trigger right away. And oftentimes, people are not ready to make a decision until you've helped them want to make a decision. So what we need to understand is that when clients don't buy, there are four different reasons why they are not pulling the trigger right away to buy a life insurance policy. My name is Cody Askins. I'm in the insurance industry for about a decade. I absolutely love this business. My father has been in the insurance business about 30 years. I have grew up in the business. I'm a second generation insurance agent. I've been an insurance agent, even started as an intern at 18, had a su successful career, love selling insurance, now more on the coaching, training, and marketing end. We own five different insurance companies that are focused on helping insurance agents in different ways, all right? And so I, today I'm gonna talk about, if you're an agent, you're probably wanting people to buy now, or you've gotten someone close to actually signing on the line, which is dotted on the dotted line, and you've heard before, I need to think about it. It's too expensive. I'm not ready. I'm not sure. Let me talk to my family. Call me back. Sounds good. Let's discuss it next week. And who likes hearing that, right? I know I hate hearing that. I know that I use the no call back close when I personally hear that. And maybe I'll sneak that in towards the end of the video. Okay, so if you want to continue to learn how to avoid these things, then keep watching this. Because if you've gotten any of these objections before, it's a good thing because you're, I believe, when I get objections and I'm getting closer to making the sale, I believe that when I get objections, they actually have more interest than if they're not giving objections. I don't wanna just hear from somebody, I wanna close them, I wanna sell them. And most people, when they are harder to sell, they're actually better clients. The tougher they are, the more objections they give, and the less likely they are to pull the trigger, and the harder they are to sell, the more I prefer to close the deal with them. So I believe there's four reasons why a client is not buying, and I'm gonna go over those right now. Stay with me, all right? So I believe the four reasons are, four reasons why a client isn't buying immediately, all right? I believe the first reason is that they are un aware. Maybe they are unaware of you. Maybe they are unaware of the information. Maybe they are unaware of their options. Maybe they are unaware of the value. Maybe they don't know what the next steps are. Maybe they're not sure of everything. Maybe they're just unaware in general. And most people, and you're probably the exact same, watch, same, same, same way watching right now, you're unaware of things that are going on and, and, and maybe when you've went to buy something, you too have been unaware of that exact same thing in the past. Think about that, that for a second. When you've recently went to buy a car, maybe you were unaware of the type of trim level that you needed on the different Chevrolet Silverados. Maybe you're like, well, this one's a premium package. Well, this one's a plus package. This one's a right? Maybe you too have been unaware of the specifics when you're going to buy. And typically, the less information someone has, and that's not, that's not the way I operate. However, most prospects, most consumers, the less information they have, the less likely they are to pull the trigger, make a decision, and do business with you right away. All right, so the first reason is unaware. The second reason, second reason is uninformed. Maybe they are uninformed on the specifics. Maybe they are uninformed on, oh, I don't, I don't understand. What is, what is term versus whole? What are the benefits. Why would someone do something like this? Why would you do something like this? Why would they? Maybe they're uninformed, which I think of uninformed as uneducated. People like to make decisions. They like to be educated on their options. They like to feel, because what does that do? When you're in the middle of a sales process, being informed and being educated does one thing. What is it? It provides confidence in making a decision and making a purchase. When, when a consumer has confidence and you have confidence in your product, things start to line up and you end up making a sale easier because everything goes back to confidence. When I'm in the middle of a sale, I wanna be confident. When I'm in the middle of a sale, I wanna be absolutely sold. Cardone says sell or be sold. I wanna be sold. 
on what I am selling, right? So that's the second thing, uninformed. The third reason is a lack of value, which we literally just mentioned shortly here, but I'm gonna talk about it in a different way, all right? When I sell life insurance, I go through, I go through five benefits. I go through nine trial closes and three options before I ever actually show them the quotes, before I ever ask them to make a decision because I know how important value is. You always hear the cliche when value is greater than price, people make decisions. Well, no, you know, no crap, right? When someone feels like they're getting more than what they're paying, yeah, they're gonna be more likely to pull the trigger. But what does that look like in your sales process, in your appointment process, when you're spending time with prospects, what type of value proposition are you showing, right? You always hear things like value prop. You always hear things like stacking the value. You always hear things like, well, I need, they need to like feel like they're a part of the equation. Well, what does that look like for you? I know that I would have a value presentation. That's why in step three of my appointment process, I talk about, I talk about present and close because I believe in presenting benefits and building value before I show options, right? Now I'm not saying you can't show quotes, but spending 10 minutes, at least five minutes walking through benefits and trial closes and getting them engaged in a part of it and going over all the benefits, right? Uh, coverage lock, price lock, double accident, builds cash value, local agent, those, can you imagine me showing three options after spending time on those things versus not showing benefits, not talking value, not getting nine trial closes, no engagement, and just throwing quotes at them. Who's more likely to make a decision? The person that has more value or the person that has a lack of value? I believe this person has a ton of value, okay? The fourth reason is a lack of urgency. Lack of urgency, all right? We just closed a five-figure coaching deal for me to coach a company over the next several months. And when we closed that, we used urgency because as Brian Tracy said in the art of closing the cell, as soon as we get, as soon as we get this finalized, as soon as we get started, the sooner you see results. So what does that look like in your sales process when you're selling life insurance or when you're selling any type of insurance? What does that look like from an urgency standpoint, right? What, what's, what's, what's their why? Do they need and want this right away? Do they already have coverage? And if so, are you improving their situation? And by doing that, are you saving them money? Are they wasting a bunch of money? Is the urgency there because we never know how our health's gonna be? Is the urgency there because, will we have to get the application in before we can even start anything, right? You could use the underwriting close, right? You buy life insurance. Most people think, oh, you buy life insurance with money. Most people think, oh, you buy life insurance with you know, wealth and income and you buy life insurance with your good looks and everything else. You buy life insurance with your health. If your health isn't good, you can't buy life insurance. I think there's a little urgency in that, right? Because maybe when you're also, when you're 20, something to think about too, something I used to use a lot when selling life insurance, when I'm 29, life insurance is less than when I'm 30. When I'm 39, life insurance is less than when I'm 40. And there's a lot of insurance companies that they may go by age nearest instead of the actual age, which means that if my birthday is July 9th, I am now, as of January the 9th, oh crap, I'm closer to 30 now, right? So some companies may use age nearest and count me as 30 on a life insurance application, right? So think about what those urgency pieces can be in your business, because when there's a lack of urgency, someone is less likely to pull the trigger. I know that when I hear someone not wanting to pull the trigger. I love the no callback close. If you ever listen to the book, Brian Tracy, Art of Closing the Sale, he says that people, he thought people were gonna buy and you know, he had all these people saying, I wanna think about it, I'm gonna call you back, I, I'm, I'm gonna do it. He thought he had tons of business that was just waiting on him. And he, he learned that eventually, I'm gonna think about it, I wanna call you back. It's polite customer speak for goodbye forever. We will never meet again. Hey, if you love this video and you want to continue to learn how to build value and get people to buy life insurance immediately, then you have to see this. How to Sell Life Insurance Amazing. It will teach you how to sell life insurance, how to have policies sold before the client even sees the close. Go click on it and I'll see you there.